chair recognizes Ms. Norton for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 37 states have been, admitted, have been admitted, admitted to the union since the adoption of the Constitution. All have been admitted by simple legislation. None were admitted by constitutional amendment. Congress has previously altered the boundaries of the federal district, also known as DC, including reducing its size by 30% in 1846. When Democrats last controlled the House of Representatives, the House twice passed the DC statehood bill, which would have admitted the state of Washington Douglas Commonwealth and reduced the size of the federal district. The state would have consisted of 66 of the 68 square miles of the current federal district. And the federal district, which would have remained under Congress's control, would have consisted of the other two miles. The Constitution's admissions clause commits to, to Congress the power to admit new states. The Constitution's district clause gives Congress plenary authority over the federal district. Last Congress, during consideration of the DC statehood bill, dozens of leading constitutional scholars, including Lawrence Tribe, the preeminent constitutional scholar of the last 50 years, said in a letter to Congress that, quote, there is no constitutional barrier uh, to admitting the state of Washington Douglas Commonwealth. The text of the Constitution is clear that Congress has the authority to admit the state of Washington Douglas Commonwealth. Republicans, therefore, have turned to spurious objections. They say that DC does not have the right types of retail establishments, like car dealerships, or the right types of industry, like mining or logging, or that DC elects too many Democrats. We have even heard dog whistles. One Republican senator infamously said the state, a majority of whose residents would be black and brown, would be, uh, quote, a, would not be, quote, a well-rounded working class state. We have seen many such unprincipled and extra constitutional arguments in opposition to the admission of new states before. Each state eventually over, each future state eventually overcame them. In 2016, 86% uh, of DC voters voted in favor of DC statehood. Mayor Bowser, why do you think the, the referendum received such overwhelming support? Well, that's a great question, Congresswoman. We worked very hard, and you have worked very hard over the years to demonstrate to the people of Washington, D.C., uh, why uh, we do everything we're asked to as American citizens, how we function as a state uh, in most regards, how we run uh, a, a city government and financial structure that would make most uh, jurisdictions proud. Uh, yet, we're here, we look at the Capitol, we see Congress people, we're involved in national discussions, yet we have no vote here, and it's unconscionable. I think D.C. residents also recognize not only do we lack representation, but we lack full autonomy. Uh, we see, for example, that laws that have been passed duly um, by our elect officials Admittedly, I haven't agreed with all of them, but I do agree with the right of an elected legislature to make uh, the laws that it chooses. I think people have also seen now the federal government trample on us, take over our streets, send troops uh, to, with aircraft uh, to hover over us. And so that full lack of autonomy can only be addressed by statehood. You rightly point out uh, that a simple legislation approved by this Congress could make us a state, just like 37 other states that have been admitted uh, to this great union. You also rightly point out that the Constitution doesn't preclude it. You also rightly point out uh, that the, the arguments that have been made have been, um, have been exposed as partisan arguments. 
And for us, statehood is not a red state or blue state question. Uh, it is a question about how do we perfect our democracy by ensuring that 700,000 people who are Americans just like you enjoy the full, full, uh, enjoy full citizenship in our country. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Chair, recognize.